Round one. Fight. Heroes never die. I'm Commander Shepard, and this is my favorite store on the Citadel. <laughs> I used to be an adventurer like you. Then I took an arrow in the knee. Power, sex, sex, power. They both come down to one thing. Hungry Gamers. Hello, 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 and welcome, boys and girls, to the 242nd episode of the Hungry Gamers podcast. We are powered by APIC.net and those sexy legends over at Audio Technica. But more on those guys and girls later. I'm your extremely humble host, Brendan White. You can find me just about everywhere, Brendan 8 bits. And joining me today, the cold heart to my Graviton Lance, the podcast ride or die that you can find on them socials at Miss Ally Hart. Miss Ally Hart, how the hell are you doing? This Saturday, Sunday yeah. recording session. Sunday, we, we Sunday. Shuffled it up a bit. Sunday. Uh, yeah, <laughs> we had to mix it up, unfortunately, because I had to have a horrible experience of going to the dentist. So. <sighs> Yeah. Nothing ever good comes from a dental no. visit. Like I know they, I know they do things for you and help keep mm. your keep your chompers clean and healthy. But like, it's not a good time going to the dentist. Not at all. I just, I, I have been bitten by having just bad experiences with dentists and just always never finding the right kind. And the only mm-hmm. time I had a good dentist was in Australia, and this was after a, a bajillion. Bad, bad dentists. And I finally got a dentist who was absolutely lovely. And his name was Dr. Nick. <laughs> <So> <laughs> it was really hard not to get into the, you know, when saying hello to him and just, hi, Dr. Nick. <laughs> At least he was not dodgy in, uh, you know, moving your appendages around or anything in surgery. Yeah, apparently so, uh, wanting yeah. to <laughs> graft my gums. So all that and yeah. more. Don't get old, that's, kids. Don't get old. That's a thing, isn't it? Yeah, like um, anyone listening, especially of that younger audience, take care of your teeth. Like brush twice a day, floss, mouthwash, all that kind of stuff. Like don't take them chompers for granted because it can be a nightmare and an expensive nightmare. It's expensive. And why is there so many different specialists when it's like your mouth? Is just like this small little area of your body, and yet there's like five different people that only specialize mm-hmm. in certain areas of your mouth. <laughs> yeah. So. yeah, it's pretty sketchy. Like I, I've done similar. I know we're sort of out in the mouth weeds at the moment, but I've gone to the the gum specialist too because I had to get some gum surgery when I was younger and getting my fake teeth put in. I had to get a heap of gum cut away, and yeah, mm-hmm. going to see that specialist and this one, and then get a referral to there and here. And as you said, like it's such a tiny little area, and yet. Yeah, there's a dozen specialists that operate in certain parts of that little area. But anyway, you know, it is what it is and they they do good work for the most part. And uh, yeah, just brush your teeth, kiddos. Keep them clean. Yeah, just look after your mouth. If not, exactly. just take them all out. Then no no problem. See, I've, I've, I've I'm denied about that a few times too. I'm like, if my teeth start going sideways, I'd just go, you know what? Let's just get some nice straight swish dentures. You know, yeah. let's let's just go all out. All in on some nice dentures. I'm going to have per- like they're going to be fake, but I'm going to have nice, perfect, pearly whites, and I'm not going to have to worry about. And uh, happy days. Yeah, and you get a free glass of water every night. Oh yeah, yep. See, two birds, one stone. <laughs> Keep them hydrated and uh, have a nice, nice, Set of clean, straight white teeth. <laughs> but we digress. We're here to, I guess, talk video games and culture and all that kind of stuff that we usually do here most of the time I on uh, THG. Uh, I see you've finally gotten around to playing uh, a little ditty that you highlighted a couple of weeks ago. Uh, tell me about Eastern Market Murder because I'm excited. Oh, so the lovely, lovely people from True Crime Games actually um, provided me with the code. So I got to try this wonderful game that I mentioned not last week. I think it was the week before, which is a, a mobile um, AR game where you solve a crime and uh, you speak to people, get clues and everything. And I love my like detective crime games. Um, and so I finally got to get like my hands on this. And if everyone remembers, I said that there's an element where if you're in Melbourne, you can actually fully get immersed in the Mel- streets of Melbourne of these locations, but they have an at home option. Thank goodness. And Oh, my God, it is so much fun setting up these <laughs> scenarios in my living room. 
and <laughs> just seeing I got so scared the first time you drop um you drop one of the characters like it, it has like you know in like Pokemon Go how they added like the AR thing and there's usually like a little symbol on the ground to say choose your location of where you want this thing to appear yeah yeah so it's like little footsteps they appear on the ground when you've kind of gotten the area right for where you can drop the location and I die. I'm like okay footsteps and I clicked it and then this woman just like <laughs> right in front of me <laughs> scared the bejesus out of me but like from that point on like sometimes you'll just have a single character just standing wherever you set them up whether it's in your bedroom or you know if you go into your back garden but they're sitting there talking to you um like holding your phone and you're like you can ask them questions you can uh, obtain items you can ask them about clues and um, other scenarios they'll actually put like a crime scene or like a location like a whole location like a shop in in this space and unfortunately i chose my tiny little space of a living room so um i was maneuvering not only my living room (laughs) but also um someone's store but i've had so much fun with this like just having that ai element um just elevates this whole crime solving experience um there was a moment where you're talking to someone who's been injured and he's sitting there in his um in his chair and he's holding a cup of tea but his teacup's empty and you actually have to like walk over pick up his teapot but then like hold your camera to oh i i poured so much hot tea on this guy's poor crotch (laughs) (laughs) so (laughs) but the, uh, the crime itself is really great like i like um I like how you actually just play through the game of asking questions. Um, The game itself retains like clues and notes that you receive from certain people or or from certain items and asking questions. I love how sassy some of these people are when you ask something that's not relevant to them. They're just like, I don't want to talk about that. I I know nothing about that. I'm like, oh, sorry. Um, I've yet to finish it, but I've just honestly with this AR element of me like, walking through the crime scenes and me not trying to trip over my own coffee table. Um, It's been so much fun. I've been having an absolute blast with this Um, and I've been playing it on iOS. So um, it sounds great. It's so, so much fun. I'm like having a great time with it. So I'm looking forward to finishing it. Um, But like already story wise, I'm really, really enjoying it. Do you, do you feel like you're, you're uh, living your best Stabler or Benson life at the moment, walking these <sighs> crime scenes? No, I feel like Murdoch Mysteries or, you know, I feel like um, there's an Australian uh, uh, Australian kind of like detective uh, crime show called Mrs. Fisher's Murder Mysteries. Murder Mysteries, yeah, I, I yeah. Feel, I feel like Miss Fisher. That's okay. Because I'm not exactly law enforcement, but I'm going to, you know, get myself in that business anyway and yeah, ask people yeah. questions and sass them around a bit. So um, the voice acting is really good too. Um, like all these different characters and all their like little different traits and everything like that. Like it's a lot of fun. It's a lot, a lot of fun. It's really, really well done. I'm, I'm excited to give it a crack. So I, I was talking to Em and Andy from True Crime Games on the socials during the week and I'm going to try when I get down to Melbourne, whether it be... I'm heading down um, the end of next month. So if I've got time then, otherwise maybe closer to PAX, catch up with them in the flesh and, and maybe play through it on those streets of Melbourne to get the full uh, Eastern so Market jealous. murder experience. So I'm very excited to give it a go because it, it sounds great. It looks great. And uh, yeah, Em and Andy seem like some real good good eggs and I'm excited to, uh, to talk about this game and uh, live it out on the streets of Melbourne and, and see how it goes. I want to like keep trying the um, AR element in really weird locations now. Like I want to like, I want to like sass someone or ask someone some questions about a crime, like in my gym or like in the street, <laughs> middle of the street or maybe at the beach <laughs> or something like that. Like I really want to put these people in very interesting locations. So yeah, lots of fun. I love it. <laughs> it's, it sounds so good. I'm, I'm really excited. It's, it's awesome to see as well. Just uh, another, cool uh, Aussie indie developer on the up as yeah. far as um you know doing something different as well like this is so unlike most of the games that we talk about and that you see getting released into the market but them really doubling down on that AR experience utilizing true crime in it as well I think is yeah it's such a great concept yeah I I really like um it, it's 
got me really excited of the potential where true crime and crime solving games can be. Like the fact that I could walk into this scene where like someone had been murdered or where a crime had taken place. And I was like walking around, looking around about the next thing, like of like, I want to like really get immersed. Like I want to see the next level of where I can actually walk into a scene and start like Mm. picking up things and maybe dusting for prints or something like that. Like that'd be next level. So hell yeah. Yeah, get that uh that Batman forensic mode going, yeah. but with augmented reality. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and then you could even think of like spin-offs where maybe they go into like haunted houses and like supernatural type elements into those augmented reality games. Like that'd that'd probably bring the heebie jeebies a bit to people, but that's that's that. a good level of horror right there. I don't know, I don't think I could do that. <laughs> I'm okay with my house being a crime scene. I'm not too sure about a haunted house. Yeah, that's not where a haunted I, crime that's, scene, That's though. where I draw the line. Thank you. <laughs> no spectral murders, but uh, good old traditional murders, fine. That's fine. Yeah. Yeah. Knife, cool. Yeah. Demon claws, not so no. much. But uh, <laughs> spe- speaking of claws and, and slicing and things, um, I've I've actually cracked into a little bit of uh, Destiny 2 Season of the Splicer this week oh. with... Uh, with Benny, I've uh, been rolling out in that new content and the the weekly rollouts that they do with um, some of the the override missions in there, where you go into the old uh, Tron Matrix and battle mm-hmm. your way through the the Vex army, which is cool, really fun concepts. I like that they are bringing more focused, nugget based story each and every week with it too so it's giving you some incentive to come back each week and and see what happens next and learn more of what's happening here and bringing in more narrative from other characters it's it's been fun Mm -hmm. it's been fun yeah um played uh played the like a bit of iron banner this week which was running as well that sucked ass that's all i have to say on that like we are like because it was just benny benny and i and then we were getting randomly grouped up with four other Joe Schmoes from around the world. Mm -hmm. But every time we played, we got pitted against one of three squads. Like not not joking. It was the same three squads on rotation. Like and they'd come out and just dominate. Like, you know, when they call the games early because it's such a bloodbath. That was happening (laughs) constantly. So then we're like, okay, we'll go play some story content and then try come back. So maybe they'll uh balance the matchmaking. No, those same three squads just rolling out, trolling, being fucking dickheads. So it really, really tainted the Iron Banner experience. Were it they was rolling? Not fun. Were they running with stasis? Yeah, stasis, oh. and they're all running uh, hand cannons and shotguns. So they'd slide around a corner, you get one shotted. They'd somehow headshot you from across the other side of the map with like they were really good. Like I'm not discounting their abilities, but the matchmaking was so unbalanced and so broken. It just like Benny and I were like, this is not even fun. Like. You know, we're not the best, but we usually can hold our own for the most part. But these guys were just, you know, special, special bloody forces just rolling in there, stomping like like power to them. And they're all there high-fiving and touching each other's dicks because how awesome they were. But, like, it was so frustrating. So frustrating. So, um, anyway. Just to make yeah. you feel better, I've never played Iron Banner. Oh, okay. I'm way too scared of like you know jumping to Iron Banner because I know my PvP ability isn't great. I watched Nasi um, play on his oh, stream yeah. the other day, playing some Iron Banana, and it was hectic. Like he's good, but it still looked crazy to me. So I will not be doing any Iron Banner in the near future. Yeah, I'm. Uh, I'm certainly going to park that for a while. That's for damn sure because uh, it was just soul crushing. Like, Join us um, in Gambit. Come hang out. Yeah, with us I, need, I haven't done any Gambit, Gambit yet. <laughs> But uh, I'm just just holding out for a uh, bit of the, bit of crossplay. Once that crossplay yes. comes, the world will open up, and uh, you know we'll be able to get a, a nice, nice clear group across all the platforms with our main crew and uh, roll out into the universe. That sounds good. But um, I've also rolled into another universe this past week and actually uh, jumped into Returnal finally. So oh. I know I've, I've been sitting on this for a few weeks because there was some some uncertainty regarding save issues and, and mm-hmm. losing your run throughs and so on and so forth haven't encountered any of that which is awesome thank god no because problem. this game yeah my desk is made of wood that is what i'm knocking right now this game is punishing like um you know it's got those roguelike elements i love the the horror vibe to it like if if i'd compare like universes outside of the video game space picture like the alien, like it's it's probably nothing that anyone has not already heard, but picture um, alien 
world like alien aliens but maybe like the the planet in like uh in like prometheus or covenant so you're on a on a world like that mm. but then it's got that same loop and even the the most the enemies they look like the the alien creatures from have you seen edge of tomorrow have with I? tom cruise and emily blunt where mm, they're in that no. constant death loop and they're fighting this alien force on earth no i haven't seen that no so it's got parts of that with this alien world and then obviously yeah the the roguelike elements uh some nice horror and sci-fi like so the the aesthetic and the vibe is is very much in our wheelhouse like i'm i'm loving it i love the the look of this world i love the doom and gloom and the atmosphere the combat's really tight the um you know, the scientific uh, various weapons, whether it be pistols and rifles and stuff you get along the way are awesome. Mm. Uh, yeah, Atropos, this alien planet, it's really beautiful but really haunting. Uh, and, okay. and the time loop that you get thrown into, like um, obviously with these games, when you die, you're resurrected, you lose your progress, but you, you carry on certain things of what you've achieved, uh, whether it be health increases or, uh, you know, other types of increases within the, in the in the game itself but you yeah you just you're playing as Celine who's this this scout who's crash landed on on Atropos and you're trying to just make your way to this uh mysterious signal to see what the hell's happening and why you're stuck in this loop and and why all these reimaginings of yourself have been uh you know getting killed time and time again yet you're still going at it again to try and unearth these this sort of sci-fi mystery so it's really cool the the combat's great the movement's really fluid uh the dual sense is great for this game as far as the not only just the gen, the general sort of different vibrational tones and the aggressiveness of that uh vibration what you're in but obviously with the triggers uh depending on how how you're sort of pulling back the the l2 trigger it's going to give you different um you know you've got alternative fire modes on your on your weapons you find mm. so and you feel that in in the tightness of the triggers and stuff like it's it's just more of that dual sense goodness but House Marquee, like I haven't finished the game yet, full disclosure. I think I'm maybe seven hours in, eight hours in. And um, I've died um, in that seven or eight hours. I think I've died probably eight times or so. Uh, so I've had a couple of good runs. Uh, early sense. in the game, I, I got dropped two or three times in, this, in the first like hour and a half, two hours, uh, just because I was severely... Uh, over ambitious i guess you could say like there's certain parts where you, obviously you can stumble across uh like higher end enemies or bosses and i'm like yeah fuck, i'll give it a crack and then it's like one shot that's it i'm like oh okay maybe i shouldn't have given it a crack you know so um yeah it's, it's really cool really cool vibe very different to everything i've played this year so far house marquee have done really well like they've they've got a you know, a good combination as far as these roguelike games that they've been uh, dabbling in for, for many years now. And um, yeah, all, all the hype this game's getting is justified, I think. Like we've seen the reviews have been really positive, 86 on Metacritic, uh, you know, nines and nines and halves through various other outlets. I think that's really justified and I'm excited to try and finish this game this week coming up. But I've just been dabbling with that and then um, I won't touch on it for too long, but uh, yeah, work my way through uh the obviously the the new versions of mass effect so i'm trying to finish mass effect one so we can uh do a bit of an unpack on that Jono and i on a, on a planned bit of future content so i've been cracking through that as well it's great more mass effect pretty <laughs> coat of paint uh same sort of narrative and, and sci-fi opera that you're all about so i'm big on that uh i binged the fourth and final season of castlevania on netflix this oh. week as well really 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 good like um that show i think just upward trajectory like first season was like four episodes it's like yeah okay all right second season okay it's better third season this is good fourth season holy moly it's awesome it, it's really really well done and highly recommended a lot of people have been thirsting for Alucard on my Twitter feed. Oh, yeah. So yeah, he's, I he's got some swagger about him. Yeah, I was about to say, I'm assuming some good stuff is happening in Castlevania just purely based on my Twitter feed. Yeah, yeah. Trevor and Trevor and Alucard are certainly the uh, the thirst traps of that game. Oh, I guess I guess some people might be a bit horny for Dracula and a few of the other characters too, but it's, it's just really well done. Really mm. well done. And, and um, 
yeah, if anyone that hasn't jumped on board or maybe jumped on and just hasn't come back to it, uh, yeah, this fourth season is certainly the strongest in in the four that they've done and it wraps up everything nicely and, and gives you some cool closure and some cool scenes. Some of the combat in this fourth season was phenomenal. So uh, can't talk highly enough for that, but something that is at the opposite end of talking highly enough about, I went and watched uh, Spiral, the, the Book of Saw offshoot last night. Holy shit, does this movie suck? <sighs> I Yeah. Like, I know that I am... Like, I know that I obviously see past a lot of things when it comes to the Saw movies. Like, a lot of people found the more recent ones bad, maybe some in the middle. Like, I agree, some in the middle were really bad too. But I I just enjoy them. I don't know why, but I enjoy them. And... um. But even with this one, Spiral, oh, I've got some like bad vibes from it. Like IGN gave it a three, um, mm. and I haven't really heard much else, uh, which means like like I haven't heard much from a lot of people in the fandom. I'm mm, sad. <laughs> I'm really like sad. S- still still give it a watch because like, I know I that is a universe near and dear know. to your heart, but mm. <clears throat> don't go in with. Don't go with any expectations, high or low. Just go in, <laughs> just go- <laughs> watch it for what it is. <laughs> you know? No expectations, just go in. Go. Maybe you'll find some good in it somewhere, but like, I, I was like, I, I don't have a high bar set for the storm, especially the, the as you were talking about, like the the latest ones prior to Spiral. I was like, yeah, this this is shitty, and this movie feels like it's even shittier for me. Like. It was just uh, like I I want to I want to like deep dive on it with you, but I'm gonna wait till you watch it so I can bounce my thoughts off you. But yeah, I I did not enjoy it. Like, um, if you're starved and you got some spare cash and you want to go watch this movie, yeah, do it. But like, if you can find it elsewhere illegally or <laughs> streaming online or whatever, do that instead because uh, woof, so woof, woof, woof. I'm so sad. Like, I, they yeah. had, like, so much stuff riding on it. Like, they put some big names on it. And I'm like, oh, okay, maybe they really care about the Saw franchise. <sighs> um, I'll have to figure yeah. out, yeah, a way to get my hands on it. And then I'll give it a watch and then I'll cry over it with you. Yeah, it's it's something. It's it's something, that's for sure. But uh, you know what? You Sometimes you make bad decisions in life. And... Uh, you know, the movie wasn't great, but the popcorn was fresh. I was happy with oh, that. Good. I got it straight out of the cooker, so it was nice and warm. Uh, the, the Coke mix was a good, not too syrupy, not too sodery. It was right in the middle. Australia needs the uh, soda machines that they have in America here, where you can like press all the buttons and then you can get all the different variations. Like it's... They're, they're here now in some oh, of the you cinemas, guys have actually. Them? Yeah, <gasps> isn't yeah. it great? That's like that's like the one thing I miss from the cinemas. Although some fast food, fast food places have it, but yeah, that's like the one thing I miss. Yeah, and and they've even got like not only just yeah, you you coke your sprites, your fantas, whatever, but then they've got like five different types of coke and then they've got five different types of fanta and you want to get real funky you can combine them and all that like it's uh the world is your soda flavored oyster at the cinemas these days it's my vice i love my soda (sighs) me too but uh do not love my spiral that's for damn sure like uh i'm happy i got discounted tickets on that one but uh yeah the less said about that the better but um, just wanted to quickly shout out to uh, Mythic Quest Season 2 is, uh, I don't know if you've watched any of it so far. I've watching it, yeah, we because we yes. finished Superstore. Superstore is fucking fantastic, people. If you've ever worked in retail, please watch Superstore. It's Ooh, great. Yeah. Um, but we decided to finish up because I think we had like one episode left of Mythic Quest Season 1. And then we watched the quarantine episode and then the LARPing episode and now Today we just started season two and it's so far so good. So it's so good. How good was that quarantine episode though? Like it was so well done. So well done considering the circumstances. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. I didn't mind the laughing episode too. I thought that was a bit of a crack. The production quality on that episode was huge. Yes. Yeah, so the, the, what they did at the end was fantastic. Loved it. Yeah, it's great. It's great. It just um, I, the only thing I'm disgruntled about with it is obviously there's hysteria and people are loving that show now. So now they're like, oh, you know what? We're going to roll out every episode once a week now to keep the hype and the anticipation going instead of last year when they just dumped the whole first season in one hit. So uh, 
yeah, just uh, impatiently waiting to every Friday evening till I can watch the latest episode of Mythic Quest. But it's so good. Oh, yeah, my God. It is so good. Like, they've got, like, um, obviously Capcom got their name attached to it now and then we also had sony put through an okay to show a certain character behind the voice actress in uh the quarantine episode mm-hmm. so mm-hmm. yeah yeah it's, it's a lot of fun like it is apple plus here i don't know yeah same here same, same here. Uh, yeah. yeah well but anyone that doesn't have an apple apple tv get on it you know we've uh we <laughs> I'm I'm certainly a convert thanks to Miss Hart here, and I'll, I'll never go back, never ever. It's it's a fantastic little device. Yep. Yeah, but uh, my goodness, the razor placement in Mythic Quest though can be a bit much at times. That's my that's my I only gripe. Noticed. It's everywhere. Apart from the headset, like the headset's pretty blatant, but anywhere else, I haven't noticed too much. Mm, yeah, for those headsets, yeah, they're all over the shop. But anyway, anyway, great show. <laughs> Watch it. Anyone that likes. Good comedy, anyone that likes uh, MMOs, anyone likes video games. Obviously, if you listen to this podcast, there's a chance you like one or all of those things. Check it out, ASAP. But uh, quick bit of housekeeping. Uh, obviously, uh, Kofi.com forward slash we are 8-bit. If you want to support us monetarily, you can do so there. Uh, at the moment, it is $5 AUD a month. But uh, once this subscription tier option opens up, we will shuffle that deck a little bit. But yeah, that $5 gets you early access to podcasts as well as exclusive access to other podcasts as well as automatic entries into monthly giveaways. And you can also get onto some uh, limited time swag such as the 8-Bit Founders Coin for $20 AUD, a mu- uh, $20 AUD flat, I should say, delivered anywhere on planet Earth. And this coin is a single run. Once it is sold out, that is it. No no takes backsies. There's going to be no repressing once they're out in the wild, that is it. You're never going to be able to get one of these again unless you're buying it off eBay for probably 20 times the value because these are hot little items out there. Uh, if you wanted to do something artistic, you could get yourself immortalized in the 8-Bit 2021 family portrait, which is Star Wars themed. Uh, that is $50 AUD. Single purchase gets you a avatar of yourself as well as a copy of the group portrait as well. And uh, talking May giveaways, obviously, uh, to enter into our May giveaway, which uh, has not only an Audio Technica Creator Pack Pro, one of those founders coins, but also additional 8-bit swag. What you got to do is uh, provide a Apple Podcast review, maybe a Podchaser review, or a review on whatever your podcast hosting platform is. Take a screenshot of that review for any of the 8-bit related uh, podcasts, whether it be Hunky Gamers, whether it be Hoop Dreams, whether it be Comedy Rewind, whether it be Putting in Work, so on and so forth. Screenshot that review, email hello at 8bit.net or slide into our DMs with that screenshot and you're automatically entered in the draw. If you've done this already, your uh, entry will carry throughout this competition giveaway series so you don't have to do it fresh every month. So if you did put one of those reviews in last month, we thank you and you are still in the running to win the May giveaway. But Miss Hart, what do you think? Do we talk about our friends over at Audio Technica? Let's do it. Hell yeah, let's do it. All right, listeners. Whether you're a budding podcaster, streamer, YouTuber, or just an audiophile like myself, Audio Technica has you covered with the best range of audio equipment in the market today. If you've listened to us at least once before, there's a strong chance you've heard us talk about our podcast origin story and the fact that Audio Technica have been there with us from the very beginning. Our very first mic we ever hungry game it into was the AT2020, as well as you know, you never forget your first. Navigating the world of video games and pop culture with the leaders of audio-based equipment is quite the journey. The news may not always be the most positive, but our audio quality most certainly is. Audio Technica are your audio-based one-up. And listeners, you can start your content creator journey today with their Content Creator Pack Pro, which includes the AT2020 USB Plus microphone, a set of ATH M20X headphones, and a handy boom arm to mount that sexy mic to ensure you're not bumping it and uh, you know getting any type of ripple effects through that audio file. It's a perfect kick to get you started on the road to audio-based greatness. If creating content isn't your thing, fear not, as Audio Technica can upgrade your vinyl recording listening experience with a sexy range of turntables, improve your KD ratio via their market-leading wide or wireless gaming headsets or just improve your general listening experience thanks to their wide range of headphones that come with all the latest bells and whistles bluetooth noise cancelling in ear or over ear it is all there 
at audiotechnica.com.au or audiotechnica.com for our un Aussie based listeners. On to some news. This week's news headlines. All right. Talking some rapid fire with Target acquired. So we've got a heap of quick hitters doing the rounds in the gaming and pop culture industries this week. And the first one, if you've been patiently waiting for Destiny 2 to finally receive crossplay, you're going to be glad to know we're one step closer to this happening. Developer Bungie has announced a crossplay beta consisting of unique Vanguard strikes will be available this week from the 25th to the 27th of May. So we're talking probably the 26th to the 28th of May probably. for us Aussie listeners with time zone conversions and what have you. Mm. But we got two days of crossplay beta dropping this week for all you Guardians out there. Let's you keen, Miss Hart? Do it. I like. It's been something I've been struggling with where I'm always like, why don't I ever play Destiny with the guys? And they're like, oh, that's right, they play on Xbox. So you're a master racer. I mean, that's where the good ones are. Um, <laughs> but uh, I'm really, really, really like looking forward to playing with everyone again, playing with Destiny. It seems like um, Vanguard Strikes, so that's teams of three. <laughs> Do you I say believe that? you are correct. I believe <laughs> you are correct. Yeah, Sony. that's that's the Zavala three stack right there. Mm. So, um, yeah, get a few rounds of those in and hopefully we have a successful beta with not too many hiccups and, uh, yeah, on- onwards and upwards to the full full rollout. Once once crossplay is officially open, like, uh, we, we've nearly got a, a full... Um, raid team. Raid party, you know, so that's exciting. That is very exciting. We can try and do Vault of Glass or just any raids. God. So maybe we should yeah. video that because I feel like that would be some interesting content <laughs> it would be an experience let's uh let's put that on the list as far <laughs> as uh yeah potential planned video or social based content right there <gasps> uh the next little quick hitter people can flies outriders has reached 3.5 million unique players in its first month this was uh announced via publisher square enix that makes the title, in quotes, on track to become the company's next major franchise. So that announcement was done by John Brook, co-head of studio at Square Enix External Studios, added that players' average playtime is over 30 hours with, in quotes, extremely high engagement for cooperative play. So um, it's just good to see. Like, the game, it's fine. I've enjoyed it. Benny and I have, uh, you know, given it a good old rattle mm. and playing a lot of the end game and, and our playtime is well above 30 hours. But it's cool to see that it sounds like they're planting their flag to say, you know what, we're going to we're gonna focus on Outriders and maybe an Outriders 2 and whatever other offshoots. And, uh, yeah, it's, it's good to see that there was an appetite for this, like 3.5 million players in the first month is uh, certainly an impressive figure. I think they should, um, if it's done so well and, like, a lot of people have picked up the title... Um, I don't know. I really haven't seen many people play it recently or talk about it recently. So I feel like a lot of people have now gotten their fill and moved on. Um, I'm wondering if they're going to like maybe add more content onto the end of the game. Um, I know that they can't really do like any kind of PVP. Uh, I don't think the game's kind of built for that, but I don't see any, um, reason why they couldn't do like... I don't know, like like a horde mode or something, I guess. Like, I guess the game technically plays like that anyway, but maybe mm. just having like, like kind of like Gears of War. Gears of War does, right? Like, yeah, like have have like, it's sort of like an unstructured horde mode in some ways in the mm. end content where you're doing these these sort of um, drop pods where it is waves of enemies, but you're pushing through this map to get to those waves where most horde modes, yeah, you you're bunkering down and setting up. Um, yeah, pr- protection and and sort of uh, things to combat that those waves. So it could work. Mm. You know, this is like it's got a lot of gears elements to it. So bringing a mode like that in, or, or trying to bring in like yeah, like a a five v five or something could be interesting. But I just don't know how that'd translate. It'd be fucking chaos on the screen. It would be chaos. Could you imagine? I'd give it frames? a go. I'd probably lose really badly and then get angry and never play it again. But um, I'd certainly give it a go. <laughs> Yeah, but yeah, three point five million. Good on, good on. People can fly, and um, yeah, more, more of it. Like I enjoyed my time. Was good. Uh, was a good sort of time killer for me when it dropped. There was a bit of a lull patch as far as big releases, but now as it's it's moving on, like 
I'll get back to playing a little bit more of it eventually. And if they bring out some some more free in-game content, awesome. But there's just a lot of games starting to pop off at the moment that are uh, taking my time. Tell me about it. Taking my time. I'm going to tell you about this, though. In news that surprises absolutely no one, Starfield will not be coming to PlayStation 5, GamesBeat is reporting. Instead, Bethesda's first-person science fiction role-playing adventure appears set to be a major console exclusive for Xbox Series X S. GamesBeat cites sources familiar with the decision in its report. Reporter Jeff Grubb earlier tweeted that Starfield is exclusive to Xbox and PC, period, end quote. So, uh... This is still a lot of uh, hypothesizing and water cooler talk. Like this has not been confirmed through Microsoft or Bethesda, but we've talked about this for a while. It makes sense. Like you don't throw $8 billion at a company and say, oh, everybody gets it still. Like (laughs) there's got to be some smart strategies here and doing something like this, like uh, Starfield was announced 2018, I think at E3. That's right. When it first got announced, nothing has been shown. There is some looped. Uh, lo- uh, leaked sorry not looped what the fuck is looped leaked stills uh, from uh, the game circulating around like two or three showing not much but I think this is going to be showcased probably in a big way at E3 next month Yeah, and it would not surprise me if it is a console or platform exclusive <laughs> little disclaimer at the bottom console exclusive um yeah i it's been pretty interesting seeing the hubbub uh that kind of went around with the starfield this week uh i think there was a lot of um misunderstanding on what people were kind of joking about and what people were actually genuinely reporting when it comes to dates and the overall um accessibility of the game like you said though we haven't seen anything so nope. It's really interesting to get excited over something that we still haven't seen a scrap from, so. No. All all we're getting hyped on is the the good graces and reputation of Bethesda and them being able to make big RPGs and a space-based RPG sounds pretty good to me. But, Mm. uh, yeah, I think we might, maybe we'll get an ambiguous trailer (laughs) <laughs> just like at E3 about this what they game. did with Elder Scrolls or just like oh my panning God. over some space oh for a bit and then be God. like yes, Starfield that's it yeah like imagine like it'd be awesome if they did the sneaky and said this game's coming out at the back end of this year but I think this is a 2022 release but yeah I think this might be the first cab off the rank to be a Xbox and PC only platform which makes sense like if that was my money, I'd be doing that. Like, yeah, PlayStation's awesome and, and they're playing nice with one another with Deathloop and stuff like that, honoring the timed exclusivities. But yeah, business is business. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Because like uh, Microsoft and Bethesda have announced this week that they are officially doing a presentation together at E3. That's right. That's right. Yeah, joint conference. That's yeah. That's right. So uh, maybe maybe we'll we'll get a little smidge in there. Yeah, we'll be getting some. We'll be getting some new Bethesda announcements. That's for sure. Or, or just showcasing some of these uh, titles that we know exist. So uh, mm. if we can hypothesize about that in the next coming weeks. We'll do a bit of a, a pre three uh, predictions pre-three. episode. I like that. Mm. Yeah. Yes, shout out to Coffee for keeping my synapses firing for that uh, that pre three hot take there. So uh, next one, uh, you can unlock Mass Effect's Normandy SR one as a frigate in No Man's Sky for a limited time. This is done by so uh, this is this is done so by completing the current ongoing second expedition that is obviously live in No Man's Sky right now. This uh, this tickles my pickle enough to maybe say I need to get into No Man's Sky to get the Normandy. I was uh, like, when I saw the trailer announcement, first of all, No um No Man's Sky trailers now just look amazing. Oh yeah. Um, Ooh, but yeah. then when I saw this one, I was like, kind of like looking at my phone, just waiting for a message from you to be like, um, <laughs> I, do you want to play No Man's Sky at all? Like, <laughs> I was just was waiting the- for it. It was tempting, but I'm like, no, I got, I got to crack through a bit more Returnal and do, try a few of these other games. I'm like, I love going back to these other games now that have become sort of comfort foodish. Mm. But I'm like, no, I got to try play these new ones. Uh, like I was chatting to Reminis in the Discord a little bit, and he's just rolled credits on Returnal. I'm like, I got to push through so I can have some discussions with some of these Returnal players and, mm. and get a bit of a feel for for what's happened in this story or, or what they thought of it. So I'm like, no. 
No man's sky. I gotta find out when this second expedition ends because I can't miss out on the Normandy. <laughs> if it ends like tomorrow, I'm gonna cry. But if it does, I'm gonna message you after this and be like, we're playing No Man's Sky for the rest of Sunday, your Saturday. Let's go. Let's go. <laughs> all right. We'll have to look into that because yeah, you of all people can't miss out. No, not in not at all. But um yeah, uh the last little uh, quick hitter, Embrace a Group. Uh, the Swedish games holding company and publisher formerly known as THQ Nordic AB. Apparently they're not done gobbling up studios. Apparently they are engaged in talks with over 150 companies over the last three months alone. And out of that 150, 20 of them are in quotes, late stage talks. So uh, my goodness gracious, like this is huge. Like they recently raised over $900 million for future acquisitions. And it seems those future acquisitions might be coming sooner rather than later. Can we talk about those numbers though? They're engaged in talks with those 150 companies in the last three months. So that's a lot of meetings. Um, Ooh, 20 yeah. of them, only 20 of them are in late stage talks. So we don't know what late stage talks mean. Does that mean we're almost signing contracts? We're almost like, you know, signing things off? Or does that mean we've had long, we've had a few meetings now where we're starting to sound serious? Because 20 yeah. out of 150 doesn't sound like too much. But yeah, like like what's that? That's twelve point five percent. Don't match me on a Saturday. I don't know if that's my quick math working. <laughs> um. It is it is ten twenty in the morning on a Sunday, and I'm still coming down from watching Spiral last night. But Ooh. yeah, you know, it's it's slightly above ten percent of those one fifty uh, that are in discussions in in the late game. So maybe they've got a contract or a letter of offer on the table. Maybe they're just working through some T's and C's, but hmm. that is insane. Like uh, they are really, really starting to ascend as far as one of the bigger, bigger pubs out there that are just gobbling up these studios left, right, and center. Um, I think a lot of this might too, too on the back of like say success of things like Valheim, which has sold six point eight million copies since its release uh, in Feb. Uh, so, um, oh, sorry. Yeah, so yeah, it sold 6.8 million copies from its release in Feb through to the end of March. So we don't have revised numbers from the past, say, 30 to 45 days for Valheim, but stuff like that. Um, and on the back of that as well, Miss Hart, outside of not only just the the 150 companies they're talking to, they've apparently got over 160 development projects in the works as well oh across God. all their other studios. So uh, holy guacamole, the Embracer that? Group are keeping busy. Yeah, I mean, I, look, I hope they're all good for good reasons. Um, whenever we hear about maybe, I mean, we're assuming the small studios that they're going to be talking to, like taking taking on board a lot of smaller studios, right? Yeah. Um, I you like you want it all to be for good reason. You want smaller studios to be able to have their creative freedom, but also then have the benefits of feeling a little bit more safer in their um in their ability to be able to maintain a income, a regular income. So, um, but you also hope that these bigger studios, when they gobble up smaller studios, that they don't just make sudden decisions and go, you know what, we made a mistake. Off you go. Yeah, or they're just saying, we just bought you because we want that IP. Oh, yeah. Your so staff, you're fired now. Yeah. yeah. There was there was a, a line in the report where they're saying that um, uh, the determination to not become a corporate machine is as strong as ever, emphasizing its desire to focus on encouraging founder creativity instead. Oh, okay. So uh, there's certainly some corporate speak there to be like, Potential companies coming on board, fear not. You know, you're still going to have your unique identities and, and creative control, but like, mm, we'll see. We're not a we'll company, see, we're a family. Mm. Yeah, oh my God. Red flag. You know what? But families fight and families don't always like other family members. So yeah, sometimes uh, families yeah. murder each other. That's true. And then you can maybe play that in AR, hopefully, with, uh, <laughs> you know, Em and Andy, True Cry, Ga True Cry Games bringing out the sequel to uh, Easter Murder Market. So, Give me that. Give me that, please. Mm -hmm. But um, interesting to see. I'm curious to know what studios they're looking at and what may or may not come from that. So uh, the next uh, bit of news, it's a bit of a deeper dive one. And I've uh, titled this one, Life's a Beach. And then you get your name written on someone for money. And uh, I've grabbed some wording from uh, Wesley LeBlanc at IGN and then just chucked a bit of my own in there too. It's a bit of a longer one, but I've cut it down as good as I can. 
Uh, Twitch has introduced a new pools, hot tubs, and beaches category in response to advertisers who have reportedly brought up concerns with streams on the platform featuring broadcasters in hot tubs. The new category will hopefully make it easy for brands to either opt in or out of this category based on whether it aligns with their target audiences, according to a new blog post, while also ensuring streamers can still publish work they're proud of. The site acknowledges the confusion surrounding hot tub streams, a growing subset of streams on Twitch that consists of people streaming while in a hot tub or mini pool. Streamers have always been allowed to appear in swimwear, according to the blog, so long as wearing swimwear is contextually appropriate, i.e. at a beach, in a hot tub, or in a pool. The blog mentions that nudity or sexually explicit content, which the site defines as pornography, sex acts, and sexual services, is not allowed. Twitch says its sexually suggestive policy, which has been used by some to rally against hot tub streams, was meant to draw a line on context that is overtly or explicitly sexually aggressive, not to ban all content that could be viewed as sexually suggestive. As far as whether or not hot tub streams are automatically deemed sexual, Twitch has made it clear that if someone is in a hot tub wearing swimwear, not partaking in pornography, sex acts, or sexual services is absolutely fine even if a viewer might perceive it as sexual. First and foremost, no one deserves to be harassed for the content they choose to stream, how they look or who they are. And we will take action against anyone who perpetuates this kind of toxicity on our service, the blog post reads. Second, while we have our guidelines about sexually suggestive content, being found to be sexy by others is not against our rules and Twitch will not take enforcement action against women or anyone on our service for their perceived attractiveness. Twitch says this category is not intended to be a long-term solution to improve brand targeting capabilities and increase personalization in our recommendations. It does solve a few issues for our audiences in the near term, though, according to Twitch. Viewers can better avoid recommendations for content that they don't want to see, and those wishing to view this content will have an easier time finding it. And obviously, brands can either opt in or opt out of this category based on whether it aligns with their target audiences. So... Miss Hart, there has been a lot of discourse on the socials about bikini streamers, hot tub streamers, females in general, stealing my views and stealing my subs and rah, 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 and it's inappropriate and all this kind of nonsense about, oh, my child's on Twitch and now he's getting this, uh, you know, bikini-laden woman parading on, on, you know, the featured content creators on the landing page of Twitch and rah, 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 it's evil and Twitch is scum and it's selling sex and all the shit. Yeah. You know, so here's, here's Twitch trying to do some form of positive. You know, they've, they've created this new category instead of just the just chatting, which is where you'd usually find these these previously. So, um, you know, there's there's the own pools, hot tubs and beaches category now mm-hmm. where you can go find your your bikini laden streamers or your your streamers that are in their, their swimming attire uh, to, to try and appease the masses. What do you think about this, Miss Hart? You, you think this is a, a good step by Twitch? What's your thoughts about, I guess, the greater discourse around this, this topic? I think we've probably got similar mindsets, but what do you think? Yeah, I mean, them creating a little subcategory for it as well as giving advertisers an opt-in and then also making um making it capable for it not being a recommendation like making sure it doesn't actually appear on people certain people's feeds i think that's all steps in the right direction overall i don't care like there is a lot of horrible things that are on twitch that i think uh, parents should be more concerned about what their kids watch and like intake like if your kid if you're just letting your kid watch twitch and not like viewing what they're like what they're taking in as much as um like what is perceived as hypersexualization of you know certain female streamers because of what they wear or how they're acting on stream there is just as much a very bad uh attitude and like yeah just overall attitude and how people act on like on the other side where it's bad behaviors uh like just people like it's i i don't know how many times where i see like very high level streamers who are just bad sports like yelling at people telling them that they're shit because they lost a game like just and I, i'm seeing it already trickle down like i this there's a lot of great people on Twitch, 
But there is a lot of lot of bad people who kids find like inspirational. They they look up to these mm-hmm. people and their mannerisms rub off onto these kids. So if you're worried about one thing, then you should be technically worried about the other if it's uh, the kid angle. Um, overall, if you hate this sort of content, maybe go and look for the people who are watching it because it, exi- yeah. it exists because people are watching it. So maybe if if you've got a problem with it, find out why, you know, there's 4,000 people watching it. Um, Mm -hmm. So it's it's like kind of like a, what is it, Joel McHale. He used to have a show called The Soup. Yep. And it's like, why does the the Kardashian show exist? When it's like, it's people watch it. So if you stop watching it, it goes away. Like, but... Yeah, I like it. It doesn't bother me. I don't go looking for it. It doesn't affect me in any way. Um, Twitch seems to be doing whatever they can to appease whoever. Um, yeah. But in, in the long run, there is a lot wrong with Twitch, and this is like only a s- tiny, small segment of a or a greater, greater, bigger picture. There's a lot of racism. There's a lot of homophobia. There's a lot of uh, there's a lot of sexism. There's oh, there's a lot of everything on there. So it's just like one like drop in a giant pool of issues. Yeah, that's that's it. And like um, yeah, Twitch is not a perfect platform by any stretch of the imagination. And I think a lot of the discourse that came off the back of this was um, you know, Amaranth, who is a, a successful female streamer out of the United States, who was probably the biggest uh, hot tub streamer you could say at the moment. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, she's she's uh, you know generating a lot of money out of her content. You know, power to her. Like, I've got no issues and I'm never going to pass judgment on how people go about earning money and trying to advance themselves in the world. As long as you're not hurting yourself or anyone else, mm-hmm. I think it's fine. And, you know, she, she's in the terms of service. Uh, she, you know, she's not, yeah, she's not showing, like doing any sex acts. There's no porn, pornography on her streams. It's just her in a bikini, in a, in a hot tub, playing games, talking, whatever it is, you know, she, she's one of many doing this now. And as you said, there's a market for it. Like people, people want this content. Like, yes, yes, this is, uh, you know, like th- these are attractive individuals, in individuals in, in, you know, swim attire, so there's more flesh on display. So some of these people that might be looking for that, that's where they're going to go. But as long as they're not harming anybody, it's fine. They're upfront with why they're doing it. You know, like uh, from what I'm understanding, from what her main drive is, is she's trying to like set up some big like animal rescue farm in the United States. So she's trying to raise all this money to to buy land and all that. And, you know, like so there's some admirable uh you know story going on with this at least from what i hear what from what i've read on some articles but like the bigger picture that came off the back of this situation was she was very vocal because twitch disabled ad revenue on her streams which obviously is a big portion of successful streamers without any heads up they didn't contact her they didn't say hey you need to change what you're doing otherwise you're going to lose the um you know, the ad, ad revenue split you're getting, they just took it away willy-nilly overnight. And that's part of the bigger problem where they're like Twitch can just pull the rug out from under these people where this is their job. You know, this is their bread and butter that's paying rent and bills and everything else. If they start just, um, you know, coming in in the guise of darkness and just going, that's off from you now because you, you, uh, you know, you were too sexy or you were too controversial or you said something that, you know, Coca-Cola, who's running an ad role for us right now, didn't agree with, you know, so some money talks. And that's the greater picture here with Twitch is, yeah, they're very much concerned about their bottom line. So they went, you know what, we can just pigeonhole these, these streamers. They've got their own category now. Our external ad revenue uh, partnerships we're working on, they'll go along fine, you know, yeah. Yeah, whatever brands that are partnered up with Twitch at the time, it's fine now. It's okay. We've we've hidden them over there. They're in their own box. You don't have to worry now. Uh, you know, they're not they're not going to corrupt your your potential uh, target market for for whatever brand it is that's getting on the ad roll. So it's it's very much band aid service from Twitch again in that regard. Speaking of like advertisements, like um. Like, I'm not suggesting that, like, kids shouldn't totally be exposed to it, but it makes you wonder what kind of message they're trying to send when one of the ad reels I've received was a Trojan condom. Um, So, like, obviously promoting safe sex is very good, but then it's like if people are talking about what maybe, 
you know, kids are exposed to. I, I don't know what the youngest age that is allowed to sign up legally for I Twitch. Think is it? 13. 13. I think it's 13. I think it's 13 for Twitch. So, I mean, there's other things on Twitch. Like, I just realized, like, gambling, poker is a streamable thing. And people can question that, like, like getting kids exposed to poker and gambling at a young age. Like, I don't know. Like, I just always feel like there's, like, way more to... Like the, there's a bigger picture there when people always want to complain about one thing. Yeah, like it's never going to be perfect. And I think you nailed it there regarding the gambling stuff because then it's like, excuse me, you see not only the, the, the adverts, but people playing those games on those platforms or even things now where you're getting a lot of like card and box breaks where people are doing, uh, you know, Pokemon card pack openings or, or, you know, NBA, whatever the sports card is, you know, there's there's gambling elements in those as well where people see streamer XYZ pop a pack and there's a, a shiny Charizard in there and they're like, fuck, I need to now go out and buy all these things. Use content credit code, blah, 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 on this website and, and get discounts. So then they're buying it and, you know, there's this snowball effect that comes on the back of that. Where, well, yeah, it's not traditional gambling and, that liability still comes down to the individual. You know, you I say it often here on and off off this podcast, you know, you've got to be like Kenny Rogers. You've got to know when to hold them, know when to fold them and, and, you know, walk away, know when to run, stuff like that. And like, don't invest money into anything you can't afford to say goodbye to, I think. Like, especially yeah. with buying cards or gambling or uh, loot boxes, whatever it is, you know, like there's no guarantee in this mystery package or box is the thing you want and only invest what you can afford to throw away. So yeah. you got to have some self-control. But at the same time, if there is predatory marketing around this, where you jump on, on Twitch and there's adverts for gambling, gambling, Pokemon, rah, rah, rah. And then you're watching your stream and he's like, man, look at this awesome box. I bought it for this. You can go there. Here's my link. Here's my code. Like, you know, it's a slippery slope and they need to be careful. But at the same time, you got to take some responsibility for your own actions too. I am, I'm aware of that. But when it is... Kids that are 13 years and above, they're very impressionable. Like their their favorite streamer, they see him cracking packs or, you know, talking in a certain way. They're going to emulate that type of behavior. So uh, yeah. you've got to be very careful. And like very I, careful. Like I said, like they're a very young age and it's like, I just definitely think that um, we've, it's, it's a very sketchy time, I guess. Like where uh, there's a generation of parents that are okay with their kid browsing the internet on their own accord but then like not not paying attention to exactly what their kid is watching so like going back to this whole hot tub you know streamer kind of you know content like i said twitch is doing things to make it its own little section if people are genuinely concerned about who's exposed to it which is fine um but like uh, chances are it's it's going to stop being popular. It's it's going to go away. It's not it's going to stop being the new hotness. I don't know. People uh, you know, people people like to look at nice things whether that be Oh, they're going to do product. something else. Like they can they can do whatever they want, you know, like Yeah. <sighs> but it's it's just it's just ridiculous like there's such a big blow up about these these content creators in their bikinis on a on a on a stream not doing anything yeah they're not taking part in sex acts and all that as per um you know the the bylines of of the twitch rules but then you can channel surf any time of the day and there'll be advertisements of people in bikinis at the beach or you know selling this that the other you you jump on uh channel seven at seven o'clock or whatever and and home and away's on and every other person's there got their shirt off or you know, running and, and frolicking on the beach and in the water. And it's like, you know what? Like, there's no one going at Alf Stewart and co about being <laughs> too horny at seven o'clock on Channel 7 where, you know, this is just the easier things to target because it's like, you know, how dare you expose our children to this? It's like, no, how dare you let your child get exposed in the first place, motherfucker? Like, yeah. you got to take some control about what your kids are up to and what you're allowing them to see. Like, there's so many cool little apps and control mechanisms for for parents these days where they can block and blacklist websites and programs and things so these kids can't get a touch and i know there's still ways around it and it's it's not perfect but you know you got to take some responsibility too for what your kids can and can't see and are and are not doing 
So it uh, goes both ways. Yeah, I wasn't allowed to watch the freaking Simpsons for a good long time. Yeah, the you Simpsons. turned out fine. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> hey, okay. <laughs> She's all right. <laughs> totally okay. Uh, no, I just... <sighs> Like I, I like I said, if this is if this is something that bothers you a lot, by golly, I hope you're angry about all the other thing, all the bad things that happen on Twitch. I hope you give everything yeah. else that is really horrible about Twitch the same amount of energy. That's all I yep. can say. Stealing our views, stealing our subs, and it's like, and and out of all that, all that big blow up, you know, Amaranth, who's the biggest hot tub streamer, bikini streamer, whatever, she's got the twenty two. Uh, she's twenty second in. Uh, sub numbers at the moment in the world so she's not up there dominating and and outside of that i think she's one of only two females in the top 40 as far as total sub numbers in the world so yeah you know world take a take a look at yourself you know don't just don't just target these people because they're having success and they've found a niche like yeah it could be short term but you know what you know, streaming isn't a forever career, so you got to get in while the getting's good and, and earn enough to try and sort yourself out. And that's what they're doing and power to them. You know, like, yeah, who am I to judge? <laughs> exactly. Oh, yeah. The internet. The internet. And the next uh, little bang of his heart, Overwatch 2, chaining to 5v5. Mm. Big changes are coming to Overwatch 2, starting with substantial alteration to the hero shooters plus, uh, player's uh, the hero shooters player versus player mode for Overwatch 2. Blizzard will switch PvP from two teams of six, the current player count in Overwatch, to two teams of five. That's right. The game that's been a 6v6 battle for the past five years will change to 5v5. Overwatch game director Aaron Keller announced the change during a live stream this past Thursday. Keller said that the new team composition for Overwatch 2 will consist of two damage heroes, two support heroes, and one tank. Keller explained that tanks can be problematic and noisy and that Blizzard has always tried to make our combat easy to read and very understandable. And sometimes it's just hard to track what 11 other players are doing on the battlefield. Removing two of those simplifies everything and it allows players to understand everything that's happening around them and make better choices because of it, end quote. The change from five v uh, the change from six v six to five v five will mean big changes for tank characters. Keller noted, making them more aggressive and more hybridy on the damage side. Lead hero designer Jeff Goodman detailed some of those changes, which currently include an alternate fire mode for Winston that fires a condensed a condensed blast of lightning for a longer range blast attack, dual fire strikes, and a cancelable charge for Reinhardt, and dual shared bubble charges for Zayi's particle barrier and projected barrier. We're not taking every tank and just making them super aggro, Goodman added. In some cases, we're pushing them, pushing some of them more. Uh, in some cases, we're pushing some of them more aggro tanks and making them a little tankier. In a lot of cases, they have more health. Diva has a lot more matrix juice in the can. We just didn't give her more missiles and let her go kill everybody. She can actually protect her team a little more, end quote. So the meta that is five years worth of Overwatch, the 6v6, the staple uh is be changing Mm. they are cutting the cord on one character per team i've seen a lot of uh a lot of people upset about this on the internet because they're like i I always roll out with myself and five friends and now i've got to say goodbye to one of them you know i'm jettisoning (laughs) a mate while we're playing overwatch 2 when it comes out uh what do you think about this miss hart where do you stand on this uh scale back and i guess hybridizing it to two damage to support one tank as far as the meta moving forward as a tank main it makes me a little scared i'm not going to get my favorite character i don't like i i don't see the reason for it the i the whole hubbub about there being too many players on the field um and hard to kind of track there was also discussion about the idea of there being two tanks on the field also being uh, troublesome where um, you would have a tank for protection and then a tank for damage and they felt like maybe that was just a little bit too overkill. Uh, I think now that's going to make anyone that runs the tank just a little bit more trickier because you will have a lot of you usually are the like you lead the charge or you're usually really kind mm. of setting the the supports for everyone yeah, else. Yeah, you're the front line. Yeah, and so now it's definitely going to be I feel like there's going to be a target on your back and it's like you're going to have like a lot of lot of issues 
um, running single tank now. Um, I also couldn't help but think about all the poor Overwatch League uh, players because they're running six, and so yeah, now... one, one sixth of all those rosters are now out whoever, of jobs. <laughs> yeah, whoever whoever ran tank in each team, they're 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 probably a little bit scared now, especially. Um, uh, obviously, once this rolls out, the meta's going to change uh, and then we'll, we'll find exactly which tanks become valuable, especially when it moves into the pro league. You're going to have to change the way you play. Actually, the whole team's going to have to change the way that they play. Um, mm. So, yeah, that it's it's it was an interesting choice. I know they're doing it because it's obviously when you create a second game, you've got to mix it up a little bit. They've added game modes and such. I do appreciate that in making this change, they're changing the tank characters. They're either, you know, giving them a few little buffs, making them a little bit stronger. There was an example that usually, you know, when you see like Lucio and he kind of does that pushback, uh, mm-hmm. tank characters don't fly back as far. They've actually got some weight to them. Um, That's cool. Yeah. And it's, I believe, um, damage wise, a lot, it, it's harder to run them down a bit. Like it's a bit, they're a bit harder to take down. Um, yeah, a bit spongier. Characters. Yeah, exactly, exactly. But um, yeah, yeah. Overall, I guess it's it's really hard to speak until we really see a rollout. But there's a few concerning factors with this decision. So yeah, like like I haven't been paying too much attention to the Overwatch meta and and what's happening out on the internet as far as like if this is something that they've been demanding, like. I think it would have come up on the internet or the socials where people are like, yeah, we need to scale this back. It's it's too chaotic with six people and too problematic and too noisy as some of the quotes here that Aaron Keller said. And I'm like, I don't remember ever when I've played Overwatch, I don't remember ever feeling like any of those things where I'm like, oh man, this game would be so much better if it was only five or it'd be so much better if it was only like single tank as opposed to two. And like, I think the great thing with these games is you can play them the way you want to play them and them trying to sort of almost, uh, you know, gatekeep it and, and sort of force you down certain paths as far as not, this is the meta, you have to adapt and play this way. Like, I think the game's going to suffer a little bit personally. Like, I could be way off base, but it just feels like when you're taking the freedom and the control away from players and then also taking one of your friends or squad mates out now because it's 5v5... <laughs> It just doesn't seem like positive changes here coming with Overwatch 2. Yeah, I mean, I like, don't know when was the last time you've played, but I've already seen... <sighs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> they've already added this, um, this kind of element where if, like, loading into the game, you know, you might play the same character, but if you're loading into a game, it will let you know which character needs to be filled, like what position needs to be filled, and you mm-hmm. actually can select that position and get a reward from it by filling that role. Oh, so, okay. so they're, they're bore- giving you a little breadcrumb trail exactly. here. Exactly. They're kind of giving you a little nudge nudge. Um, I've actually been watching a lot of Overwatch um, League. Like, I don't know why, but I really have really, really <laughs> got into it. Like, I let's, let's cut back to, God, so many years ago on this podcast where I was like, I was like, eSports? Like, this, I don't get it. Like, I don't understand. Like, I don't think I'll ever watch eSports. And now I'm watching all the Overwatch League live streams and, you know, I haven't got a team yet. I haven't picked a team yet, but I'm like really, really into it and I've been watching it. And I can see the benefits of two tanks. They've usually got the support tank that usually is there doing some hard hits, but obviously protecting the team. Reinhardt is obviously one of the major ones. And then there's obviously the the real heavy tank that does the damage. Um, uh, Wrecking Ball is quite regular in that, which was quite surprising. Mm. Um, <laughs> but yeah, like like I said, it's now going to change the whole meta. It's going to change the way people play. Maybe that is the overall um, decision-making there where, you know, people, players complain about a game being stale. So if you take an element out and everyone has to kind of essentially relearn the game, that's them kind of freshening it up a little bit. Yeah, that's true. That's true. When Overwatch 2 comes out, it's like, look, it's a brand new game, you know, now with 5v5, you know, like it's, <laughs> we it's, cut it's a, leg a big off. enough change. <laughs> yeah, it's a big enough change to keep it fresh. And regarding a team you support, maybe you could you could support one of these new teams that are going to come up with all these fired stuff. So probably some of the rosters, obviously, are gonna, they're going to cull. Maybe there'll be a super takes. team. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to support that team. The, uh, yeah, the... 
the average Joes, we'll call them for oh. now. The, the all the, all the dis the discards and the offcuts. That's my team. Whatever they're going to be, the Seattle suck or something. I don't know what they're going to be called. That's who I'm going for. Let's go. Seattle suck. <laughs> <laughs> the wet socks. The wet socks. Oh, yeah. the Wisconsin <laughs> wet socks. socks. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. <laughs> no, the Washington wet socks because Wisconsin. That's where Green Bay is and that's my mortal NFL enemy. So the, oh. the Washington Wet Sox, that's who we're we're starting that team right now and they're uh I'm where they're number one fans. Yeah. Let's do it. And they're just an all tank team. All tanks. <laughs> it's like fuck the meta. It's just five <laughs> tanks rolling out. All right, that brings us to the end of the news. Let's jump over here. Tweet of the week. This first one, just uh just oh not the first one. This only tweet I should say comes via the official Destiny 2 Twitter account, which is at Destiny the game. And uh, they just say, after verification, we're proud to congratulate our Destiny 2 Vault of Glass World First Winners Clan, Elysium. And that includes Cruz, Kairos, Mo- Moopy, Quaz, Salta Greppo, and Slap taking down Vault of Glass. How long? You said it, what, in the it was first four, couple of hours? Like, I think it was like four hours and 30 minutes. <laughs> yeah. I, I've got well a, done. I've got a credit to them, actually. What they did was there's a standard, very ba- basic mode of the raid that you can play which isn't inclusive on the world record they actually completed that first so while everyone else was playing the standardized like world record style i think it's called challenge raid um they actually just ran at basic level bare bones ran through it completed it came back around (laughs) and then did it the right like the challenge mode and they won um I guess it's a smart way to do it because they'd get a feel for it and know what strats are going to work on this weaker tier and then just run through it at full strength. Yeah, exactly. Um, Some people may know, remember, in Destiny 1, um, Vault of Glass is OG raid, um, Mm -hmm. the very, very first. Um, So they've added some things, they've changed some things up. There's a little bit of a mix-up. For the most part, there's a lot of similarities as well. So a lot of people who played it were kind of familiar but uh, like I watched a few streams and people were struggling, like all OG Destiny players were struggling through it. So um, it was great to see this team. I kind of like jumped around onto all their individual Twitter pages and streams and just low level Destiny players just, you know, they've got a few world records of like, you know, uh, completing raids with just two people kind of world Ooh, record kind of yeah. thing. So, um, but yeah, this seems to be that their first world record completion of a raid. So. Well done. Yeah. Well good, done to Elysium. To and uh, I'd, I'd be definitely demanding the, uh, the, the, the Vault of Glass WWF equivalent wrestling belt. I'd want that in real life to put on my wall if I, think I was part of I think they do get that. That's cool. I'd want one each though. I wouldn't want just one for the team. They better no, send six. Uh, I think, yeah, maybe. I'm trying to remember. Obviously never received one, but I'm pretty certain that's the that's that's what you get for beating the raid, being the world's first. So good. So good. But uh, yeah, hopefully we can get our, our equivalent uh, scores up high enough to, to give this a crack once crossplay is embedded and we can get a ragtag group of misfits together and oh, yeah. uh, see how we fare with the uh, the Vault of Glass uh, raid slightly reimagined here in Destiny 2. <laughs> but uh, yeah, shout out to Elysium. Well done. New releases and events. All right, we're talking about new things coming out this coming calendar week, starting from Monday the 24th of May, which is uh, when you'd be digesting episode 242 of the Hungry Games podcast. Uh, The next day, which is Tuesday the 25th, sees the release of Biomutant on PlayStation 4, PlayStation 5, Xbox One, Xbox Series S slash X, and PC. If you want to get in on that, um, on Wednesday, the 26th of May, the latest episode is of Is This Thing On is available over at Kofi or ko-fi.com forward slash we are 8 bit. So get that into your ears for the price of $5 AUD a month. Price for a cup of coffee, price for a uh, small cheeseburger meal at McDonald's, I think. I think that's $5. Yeah, you know, five, it's nothing. $5 for a coffee, which is pretty good for a place that's called coffee. Mm-hmm. Bang on the money. All right, Thursday, the 27th of May, sees the Hungry Game Show Bioshock Edition with Cap Benstead Ooh. getting released in full on this Hungry Gamers RSS feed. See how Cap fares against the 2007 horror shooter FPS action RPG classic that is Bioshock. I love that game. I love that franchise so much. 
My heart's broken. I've been breaking hearts all week. That's true. That's true. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's that's discussion for another day right there. <laughs> but uh, the, the next thing also on Thursday, 27th, Oddworld, the collection drops on the Nintendo Switch. So if you want to get Abe and the Maduckins and everyone else involved on the Nintendo Switch, you want to play that on the go, Thursday, the 27th, sees that drop on the Switch. Um, and also in the cinemas here in Australia, A Quiet Place Part 2 makes its way to the cinemas, which I am hyped as fuck to watch. I loved the first A Quiet Place movie, and I cannot wait to check out the second entry into this universe. You can't, you, you big Quiet Place gal, did you watch the first one? Did you no, like it? I hated the idea of it. I didn't bother watching it. Oh, seriously, though, watch it. Like, mm. I, you might hate the idea, but this one. I'll stand by. It is great. Mm. I'll stand by that one. Mm. Obviously, uh, Friday the 28th sees not only the latest episode of Mythic Quest, but we see the return of Lucifer to Netflix mm. with the uh, second half of season five. And also we get uh, Cruella dropping uh, via Disney Plus Premier Access. If you want to pay up to watch uh, a bit of Cruella de Vil, the, uh, <laughs> the prequel to 101 Dalmatians on Disney Plus. You want to get in on Emma Stone as Cruella. You can this weekend. <laughs> I, just, I every time I see a trailer for that <laughs> movie, I'm just like, why? It it's, feels like it's like PG Harley Quinn. No, it feels well. Actually, yeah, there was actually some moments in the earlier trailers that felt like PG Harley Quinn. I'll give that to you, but it's also like, oh, let's devil wears Prada it a little. Like, yeah. I don't know. I'm not going to... Which is a great film, by the way. I'm a fan of Devil Wears Prada. Uh, um, but... <laughs> uh, either way, I won't be watching this one. I have no interest in it. Okay. Well, uh, on that day as well, if you wanted to maybe uh, scratch that nostalgia itch, Wonder Boy Asha in Monster World <gasps> is dropping on several platforms on the 28th slash 29th, depending on where you are in the world as well. So if you want to get on Wonder Boy, and there is also the... Uh, the two graphical options they're doing with a lot of these remakes where you can go old school, you know, Sega Master System, Mega Drive graphical quality, or you can go the new hotness. So uh, get amongst Wonder Boy, Asha in Monster World at the back end of this week as well. They're doing um, Alex Kidd in Miracle World, aren't they? I'm pretty certain Ooh, I saw yeah. that they were Ooh, doing yeah. that one. I have, to, I have to play that. I barely made any <laughs> progress in that. Yeah, at my young age, mind you. I think it was like, what, four? Um, but yeah, I'll have to get on. Yeah, that. I can't wait to ride his little motorbike and uh, challenge bosses with scissors, paper, rock, <laughs> and <laughs> ride that little helicopter. Yeah. Oh, that helicopter. So good. Oh. Yeah, that, that were tough levels. Mm. That were tough levels. But also then just punching people with your giant fist. So uh, <laughs> go, Alex Kid. But yeah, that, uh, Miss Hart, brings us to the end of uh, THG 242. Anything else you want to say before we close the show down for another week? Uh, no, I'm going to... St- I'm actually going to make pulled pork. Oh, yum. I had some pulled pork last night. It was delicious. Oh, you've been posting burgers lately. And the problem is, it's like for you, <laughs> you post burgers at prime time, like dinner time, I'm assuming. <laughs> and for me, I'm like waking up in the morning and it's just like seeing this delicious food. And I'm like, that's not fair. Well, you can do the same. So we can we can sort of, uh, you know, it'd be like Instagram tennis. You post a good photo and I'll wake up to it and then vice versa of these foods. I was going to say, pulled pork, can- can't, there's no pretty picture of pulled pork. There's food that you can't make look attractive. Yeah, that's true. What are you going to, how are you, what are you having with your pulled pork? Uh, probably tortillas. Okay. I'll it's a shredded that. pork. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Yep. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, cool. I'm down. That's awesome. I just love pork. Everyone likes a good pulled, pork. Pulled roast, bacon, ham, whatever you want to throw pork at me and whatever variation, I'll take it all. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Let's get out of here, Miss Hart. It's been, uh, it's been an episode. Uh, listeners, thanks as always for stopping on by. But until next week, 8-Bit Nation, much love. And stay hungry.
You've been listening to The Hungry Gamers, one of many gaming and geek culture-related podcasts from the 8-Bit Collective over on 8bit.net. Check out more episodes on your podcast service of choice. And while you're there, please be sure to rate and subscribe. Until next time, boys and girls, stay hungry. Also, shout out to the Washington Wet Sox one more time. Let's go, Wet Sox. Let's go. <laughs> oh, oh you've been a wet sock with the clap. <laughs> 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 <laughs>